Welcome. This is Mike Matheny with Tennessee Job Training and Safety. Today's topic, we're going to talk about good housekeeping. This is at your workbook. In this uh, PowerPoint that we're going to talk about today, first we'd like to review any near miss or close call before we begin talking about today's PowerPoint. So take a moment to review any close calls, near misses, or accidents that that's happened with your utilities. Okay, your mother does not work here. It is your job to clean up, tidy up as you go. Most workplace injuries are due to slip, trip, and fall. Most slip, trips, and falls are due to poor housekeeping. So cleaning up as you go greatly helps and keep the workplace as safe as possible. So disclaimer, this material was produced under grant under number SH 17820-0860-F23 from the Occupational Safe and Healthy Administration, U.S. Department of Labor. It does not necessarily reflect the view of the policy of the U.S. Department of Labor, nor does it mention any trade name, commercial product, or organizations implied endorsement by the U.S. government. The objective of this program, we're going to define housekeeping and how it affects your workplace. We'll also explain the risk and injuries that may occur due to poor housekeeping. As well, we will identify management practices and we'll also identify the engineering control for illumination and ventilation. Do you do your housekeeping? Should it be a priority? Hey, it's not my job. How many times have you heard that? Housekeeping, in a term referred to cleaning of a home. But the true definition is management of household tasks and maintaining other property and routine tasks. Here we're looking at a slide where we see that we have a pole yard. This is the simplest way to get it off your trailer, but it is not the way it should be on your pole yard. That's an accident waiting to happen. The risk of injury is higher when housekeeping is maintained poorly. As you can see, we got a trip hazard waiting. Your electrical panel by OSHA requires to have clean access to be able to get to your panel should you have a breaker trip or have any kind of electrical issue. Under normal circumstances, you have a yellow line that usually barricades around the area to let you know you do not block this area. So do not create a tripping hazard. How can you, in how can you be injured by a household issue? Tripping hazard, slipping hazard. Here we had the bed of the truck on the left side. As you can see, it is pretty cluttered up with the old insulators, wire conductors. You cannot allow this to happen. This right here is an accident waiting to happen. That's why we have to take the time each morning to clean off the truck, make sure we have things properly stopped so you do not have a tripping hazard trying to get to your boom. But let's just say we had a transformer that was leaking and we have to get it on the truck to bring it back. As soon as you get back to the office, take the oil absorber or whatever you have to clean up the oil on your truck. We will examine the art of housekeeping as why is this important to you and to your management. A pole yard or a transform yard, as we see to the left, is unacceptable. You cannot get to your transformer to look at your nameplate, or can you get to anything to uh, load up on your truck. To the right is a pole yard or a transform yard that we would like to have. Here we have pad mounts on the top racks and then you have your regular transformer based out to where you can read your nameplate and get to as necessary. What environment would you like to work in? This left side could be engineer's desk, it could be foreman's desk, who knows? That is a stressful desk. But over here to the right, this warehouse is clean. It is ready to work out of. You can get to your material. You can find what you're looking for. 
This should be at every warehouse, every utility warehouse. Cluttering the debris is very difficult to work around and causes many problems. Which truck would you rather work out of? This looks almost like a new truck till you left. Everybody's ready to go, plenty of room, nothing sitting in the seat, nothing in the floorboard. But the one to the right, trash, just both trash in the floor. Hey, has anyone seen my phone? Is there a big difference between clutter and debris? Yes, much different. To the left, we have bad clutter. Here's a workbench with things just piled up and piled up and piled up. But I'm trying to find something under here. You're going to probably have to remove everything on the desk to be able to find it, the workbench. To the right, here's the debris. I know last year I saw this. There's a piece of number six triplex in here somewhere. I know I saw it here. Each year these leaves accumulate. You need to remove them yearly. Clutter can cause a worker to fall resulting in injury. You always have to have a clean path to wherever you're going to. You got electrical panels in the back. You got your work clothes hanging to the right. And they're using this to store insulators. Unacceptable. In case of an emergency, access can be blocked or difficult to navigate around to the exit the area. Here we have a chainsaw, pole saw, blower, blocking the exit of this door. You have to have always an emergency exit. Injuries occur when the worker either slips over clutter, could be from the vacuum cleaner or the five gallon bucket, someone trying to get something off the top shelf to the point that we trip over unnecessary objects. Here we have these racks that are sitting on the pallet. There's a right place and a wrong place for everything. This is unacceptable. How about a large amount of accumulation of trash? Not a problem, wrong. It can be a fire hazard real quickly. In the world, the industry that we work in, leave uh, empty boxes or whatnot, Laying on the truck can create a fire hazard. There are times that we have a spark, lifting the finger, dropping the load, open secondary, flopping together can create a spark. Next thing you know, we have a fire on the bed of the truck. OSHA states housekeeping should be maintained at all times, as does management and supervisors. This is a poor truck to be, all, to be working for. Them. Oil and chemical leaks should be addressed immediately to reduce slipping and surfaces. You got an oil drum that you're ready to pump, should be in a vat to contain any loose oil or whatnot. Oil dry should be in place of any spill that, that, that's left out from the empty drum. Worker can seriously be injured by falling debris. The following could be your workplace, so we would like for you to discuss what you can observe and what you can do to improve these sites. Here, this is probably pretty common in most utilities. You got the paint can, aerosol can, could be even in your shop at home. This is no longer acceptable because they have to be in an enclosed container marked specifically for paint so that, it, that uh, they cannot create an explosion. Here we have a yard full of pad mount transformers. This utility probably bought these at a great deal on sale somewhere, so they bought plenty of them. But look how they've been sitting out on the yard for so long that to the point where the pallets have deteriorated to the point they can't set level on top of one another. And then guess what happens next? We'll probably have an oil spill or something where it's starting to leak because it's not setting level. Is this your toolbox? Is your toolbox look like this at home? Or is it like this at work? Don't allow it to get to this point. Do not clutter up your toolbox or your workstation. Then we have our personal pickups. Yes, we live out of them. We spend a lot of time in them. Take the time to clean, put up, have it where you can get in and out of your truck safely. Pallets, okay, the uh, transformer pad mount to material that's brought in from the uh, utility from other areas. They get put on pallet, then we take them and stack them up. It's to the point where they break down or, or to the point where they're deteriorating, need to dispose of them. 
if you uh, have a tram closure, a lot of utilities are still using some or not, but we're going to keep this for part. Take the time to break it down and store it properly. So let's talk about discussions that uh, refer to action. Do we feel that housekeeping is important in the workplace? It needs to be. It should be a very important part in our daily lives. What action should be discussed? Who is responsible for housekeeping? And why are we responsible? We all are. It's a daily activity from to cleaning the truck to the uh, equipment that comes in from these uh, different uh, suppliers. It is our responsibility. So in reference to the good housekeeping of this program, it's OSHA's e-tooling, www.osha.gov. Worker safety is a priority, but it also has to be a habit. Good housekeeping is everybody's job. Pick it up, clean it up. Know what your responsibilities are. Thank you for this program, and hope you learned something from it. Thank you.